Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're gonna to be reviewing the Elitist S from Big Big One. Now, normally when I do my controller reviews, I try not to indicate at the beginning of the video whether I liked or disliked the controller. I'm gonna break my rule today because this one, although it's by a manufacturer that is sort of new to the game in Nintendo Switch Pro controllers, I wanna make sure you stick around for this review because trust me, the Big Big One Elitist S is a controller review you're not gonna wanna miss. Basically, normally with these off-brand controllers, you're generally always trading like quality or functionalities versus buying a standard Pro controller to save money. But with the Elitist S, I'll be honest with you, for the first time, unless you're really, really into NFC technology, because that's basically the only thing the controller doesn't have that the Pro controller does, there are actually no trade-offs with this controller. And on top of that, it actually has functionalities that the Pro controller does not have that a lot of players are looking for. And by the way, I just want to thank Big Big One at the same time for the review sample. But I want to be clear with all of you, this is not a paid review. They just gave me the product for free, which is why I'm going to be linking their website or their Amazon pages down below in the description of the video. But other than that, these are all my personal views on the controller. Now, if this is the first review of mine that you're watching, just to let you know, we start with a close-up of the controller, then we move on to the scoring of the controller. So the close-up is really so you get an idea of what the controller is offering and all the functionality, and the scoring is basically how I appreciated the controller. Now, if you really want a lot of details on my review process, I actually have a video on the channel from about a year and a half ago that is basically how I review controllers. I'll be honest though, you don't really need it. Uh, within this video, you'll get pretty much all the information you need to figure out if this controller is for you or not. Now, the last thing before we get to the close up, don't forget that if you do like this content, you want to see more as usual, please hit the like button. It's the best way to support the channel and also subscribe if you aren't already. Now, the first thing I always like to do is take a quick look at the box. And one thing that I wouldn't want to mention that can't actually be communicated necessarily on camera is that the quality of this box actually feels like an actually licensed controller. Like the cardboard that they used and the image and whatnot quality is actually like a first party controller or a licensed controller brand box. Of course, the box isn't that important. What's important is what's inside. But the fact that they took the time to produce a quality box like this generally means that they care about their product and that they actually want it to probably stick around for quite a while. Now, the front of the box is pretty standard. We get an image of the controller. We see that it has gyro capability, that it's wireless, and that it has customizable back buttons, which is something we'll get to on the controller. Other than that, it's a pretty standard box. We have play big, one big. We have play big, one big, which is, seems to be their catchphrase of a big, big one. And on the side, we have basically just a couple of links to their website. And at the back, we have a breakdown of a couple of the special points of the controller, but we'll look at that when we're looking at the controller itself. Now, enough with the box, let's look at what's inside. So once we're inside the box, this is what you get. You get the controller, you get the manual, and you also get a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Now we're reviewing this as a switch controller, but this is nonetheless a very nice inclusion because if ever you want to use this controller wirelessly on PC or an, on an Android device that doesn't actually have Bluetooth built in, well, you can just use the 2.4 gigahertz uh, dongle and you can still use this controller wirelessly. It isn't necessary because a lot of people have Bluetooth nowadays, but it is still nice that they included it to have universal compatibility with pretty much any PC that has a USB port. Now on to the main show, let's take a look at the controller. And the first thing is the actual texture of the material used for this controller is not standard plastic. It's that rubberized plastic that is great, great for the feeling in your hands and also the grip of the controller. Meaning that as your hands get sweaty, this controller is not going to become slippery. Secondly, another thing that is sort of hard to show on the camera, the analog sticks actually are very concave, which is something I love, especially once again, when your hands get a little sweaty, this gives you tons more grip than the standard analogs, especially when they're convex. And it's actually a really nice advantage to this controller because generally I have to buy thumb grips to install on my controllers to get that concave feeling. 
Now, if we move on to the rest of the face buttons, they are nice, clicky, and very responsive buttons. Now, the standard layout or the standard indication on the buttons is the standard switch layout, which is YXBA. But if you look here very closely, and I'll try to show it on camera, you have in smaller letters the Xbox setup. So if ever you're a person that doesn't know the setup by heart, well, if you look at the smaller letters, you can tell which button is which for an Xbox controller, which is particularly useful for someone using this on PC. And just in case you were wondering, for the trigger buttons, we basically have digital triggers on all four trigger buttons at the back. So for the ZR, ZL, R and L buttons, they are all digital triggers. Now for the switch, I actually like that a lot just because the analog triggers on the ZL, ZR sometimes uh, is just useless on the Switch and it does just feel better because the games are often set up to have digital triggers. Now, let's take a couple of seconds to talk about this D-pad. When I got this controller, the D-pad was very stiff and I was a tiny bit worried, but I've got to say that I'm glad that I have a three week uh, testing process because after a week to two weeks of use, I really broke in the D-pad and now the D-pad actually feels quite, quite good. It was a little bit too stiff at the beginning, but after just about a week or two of use, it becomes very responsive and very nice to feel. So if you do get this controller and you feel it a bit stiff, just give it about a week or two, use it regularly, and you'll see that you will not have any issues with the D-pad after that time period. Now I'm skipping the function button for the moment, just because we'll see how it functions when we actually look at the functionality of this controller. Let's flip to the back. So contrary to usual, this controller actually has a lot happening on the back of it. We have the macro buttons, one on each side, that you can either reprogram as any of the face buttons, or you can actually program as a multi-input macro. And we'll look at doing that in a couple of seconds, but this controller does both. It's not only remapping for these buttons, you can actually input multiple command macros. Also, if you would ever want to remove the macro buttons for any particular game because you don't want them in the way, you can also release the, the pad here and you can actually remove the macro function, meaning that you won't be hitting the triggers while you're playing. It also gives you access to the reset function on the controller and obviously access to servicing the controller if ever the need would be. Now, I've brought my switch into frame so we can look at the actual functions of this controller because there are actually quite a few. Now, first of all, really interesting for an off-branded controller, Yes, this controller does wake your switch up. So if you were looking for a wireless controller that can wake your switch up, this one does it, no problem. We're gonna start looking at that function button. The first function this controller has is turbo. When you wanna activate turbo, you press function and the button you want turboed at the same time. So just to show you, right now it's single input Y button. If we hit Y in function, from now on, Y becomes a turbo. As you can see, I'm hitting it once and we're getting multiple inputs. But not only that, if after that you hit the function and down button on the controller, you can actually change the speed of the turbo function. You'll, let's see, let's put a couple of Bs in there. Right now you can see the speed is going in pretty quick. Let's say we hit function and down. Now it's going in even quicker. Function and down, low speed. So you actually have turbo functionality with three different speeds and it's cyclical, meaning that if I hit this down and again, we're back to high speed. That's the first function of the controller. By the way, if you wanna cancel the turbo functionality, you just hit the function button twice, cancels all the turbos, or you could have redone button by button the turbo and the function button. So first let's look at remapping the buttons on the back of the controller to a single button. So for example, for that, what I would do is I would hold down the function button and press in the back button that I'm wanting to remap till the controller vibrates. When it vibrates, I would hit the face button that I want to replace it by and re-hit that back button. The controller will blink. And now if you see, let's put a couple of A's in there. My back button is remapped to the Y button. As simple as that. If you want to cancel the remapping, you just hold down the back button and the function button and you re-hit right away the back button. That undoes the mapping. Now next I said we can actually map multi-button functions to those back buttons as well. And that's the last thing we're going to look at. Basically, you would do the same thing. You hold down for two seconds the back button and the button that you want to remap. Then you would input your input. So let's say YXBA 
left, right, left, right. And you would re-hit that back button. It'll record your entry. And then all you have to do is hit that back button and it'll input exactly what you input. It basically records your inputs. Now, why is it important that it records your input? It will take pauses and also rhythm. So let's reprogram that button, but let's put a pause in there. So let's say we do Y, X. Let's wait, one, two, three. B, A, right, right. Hit that. Now let's replay the macro function. Y, X, it'll wait the three seconds. B, A, right, right. Why is that super important? Well, because it actually mimics rhythm for fighting games. If you want to input different combos, it'll actually work perfectly with this controller. Now, other than all those special features, it also has a full set of regular features, meaning I already mentioned it, but it does have rumble. It is wireless. It has a rechargeable battery. And yes, it does have gyro as well. Now, there is only one tiny issue that I was a little bit disappointed to see. The controller doesn't charge with USB type C, it charges with micro USB. But they did do the one thing that I really love about micro USB solves the issue for the fragility of this charger. They did an indented charging port that basically fits the USB charger into the controller itself, meaning that there is no fragility because you really can't move this charging port once it's in there, since it actually inserts quite deeply into the controller. But I thought I would mention it nonetheless because I would have liked to see USB-C rather than micro USB, but that's just a minor issue considering everything this controller is offering. So now that we have a pretty decent idea of the functionalities and what this controller has to offer, let's get into the scoring. And the first category that we always look at is the build quality and feel of the controller. And for probably the second time only on the channel, I'm going to be giving this controller a five out of five. Look, if I didn't know this was an off-branded controller, I would have thought someone handed me a first-party controller. It's built that well. And the texturized feel or the rubberized feel on the controller is just amazing. And overall, build quality-wise, over three weeks, I have no doubt that this is a controller that will stand the test of time. So next, we get to the features and aesthetics category. And in this category, for the first time ever, I am going to be giving a 10 out of 10. Look, I, I could nitpick, and say it doesn't have NFC and that it charges by micro USB, but the functions we get in replacement of those are so much more useful for gaming that they make up for those and they add to the controller. And aesthetics wise, it's a really clean aesthetic. Like I said, if I didn't know that this brand wasn't a first party brand, by the aesthetics of the controller, it's so clean and neat that I would have thought once again that this is a first party controller. So basically, if we go over it again, it is wireless. It has a rechargeable battery. It has motion controls. It has turbo functionality. It has macro buttons. It has multi-button macro compatibility. On top of that, it just feels amazing in your hands. It's all around for the features. I can't see what you could pack more onto a controller like this. So now we move on to the gaming categories. And as usual, we start with... 3D action and FPS games. And once again, this controller for the first time is going to be scoring a 10 out of 10. Look, for FPS and action games, this is pretty much the perfect controller. The asymmetrical design for the joysticks is perfect for this type of gaming. The macro functionality can be amazing depending on each game, obviously, whether you need it or not. I love setting the reload button to the back macro button rather than having it on one of my face buttons or even one of my trigger buttons and whatnot. Basically, this controller for this type of gameplay was made for it. So next, we move on to 2D side scrollers and platformers. And in this category, the controller is going to still be getting a very solid 9 out of 10. Basically, the only reason it's not getting a perfect score is because this is not one of the best D-pads I've felt before. It's a pretty good D-pad. Once you break it in, it actually gets tons and tons better, but it is not the best I've ever tried. And obviously, the placement of the D-pad is not primary on this controller, meaning that there are some better options for 2D side scrollers and platformers. At the same time, though, the fact that it does have turbo functionality, which does help out in a lot of retro games, is a plus for this controller. And once again, the macro function can be useful depending on the game. So next, we move on to 2D fighting or traditional fighting games. 
And in this category, it's actually going to be the lowest scoring category for this controller, getting a nonetheless very solid 8.5 out of 10. Basically, for this category, unfortunately, this is where the D-pad not being the best I've ever tried is going to suffer the most. However, obviously, if your game lets you use the joystick instead, some people can adapt to it pretty easily. The macros for different functionalities, attacks, especially in Street Fighter, can be good, but you do have to be able to pull them off yourself previously to be able to actually record that macro, which does limit a tiny, tiny bit the functionality on this controller. However, overall, it still does give a pretty solid entering, although it's not the best controller for this category. Now, the last category that we're going to be looking at are racing games or kart games. And once again, for the first time ever on the channel, this controller is going to be scoring a 10 out of 10. It's the same thing as the first category. I can't think of anything else I would want that this controller isn't already offering. Just having those macro buttons at the back can be a game changer for a lot of games. Look, even Mario Kart, although it's not necessarily, I love throwing my Koopa shells from the back button rather than having to hit one of the top buttons. I can just keep my hands in a more comfortable position for racing and especially if I'm using the motion controls. So now overall, that gives us an amazing score for this controller of 52.5 out of 55. Look, this is one serious major contender to the Pro Controller. If I personally had to choose between this or the Pro Controller and I could only own one controller, I would personally choose the Elite S over the Pro Controller. Now, however, I do want to mention, because I'm always on the lookout for the next contender, that so far, this is my favorite controller, but there is a controller out there that I can't yet get in Canada that just might give this one a run for its money, and that is the 8-bit though SN30 Pro 2. Why? Because basically, the only reason I didn't like my Pro Plus is that although it was giving you a macro function, there were no additional buttons to actually map those macro functions to, and the SN30 Pro 2 sort of solves that issue. But I just want to be clear, when I say it's a contender, I'm not saying it's going to beat this one. It's going to be a contender, and basically you're going to have to choose what you prioritize. I do think that the Elitist S is going to be better for someone who plays racing and FPS games or 3D action games because of the asymmetrical design for the joysticks. However, someone who primarily plays fighting and retro games is probably going to want to angle more towards the Pro 2. But then again, circling back, that's how good this controller is. It's competing with my previous favorite controller, which was the SN30 Pro Plus, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be matching the Pro 2 blow for blow, and 8-bit though is a very well-known controller manufacturer. So the fact that this is coming from a manufacturer like Big Big Wan that previously I didn't really know about for controllers is really, really impressive. So that's pretty much it for my review of the Elite SS. Now, don't forget that the links to the Amazon pages for this controller are down below in the description of the video, but they are not affiliate links, so you can use them. You can go directly on Amazon. The controller sells, by the way, for about $45 US, which is nonetheless $15 cheaper than the Pro Controller, which is why I'm, I'm saying it's such an awesome contender to that controller. And at the same time, as I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget that if you did like this content, you want to see more, please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.